To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education. Hello dear grade 7 children. Today we are going to learn the 13th lesson of the textbook that is atmosphere. What do you know about the atmosphere children? Some of you are very familiar with this term and some of you are not. Right. So when we consider the earth, the earth is made up of three main parts. That is the solid part, liquid part which means uh, where the water contains and the gaseous part is also there. Right children. The solid part of the earth is known as the lithosphere and the liquid or the total amount of water contained in water is considered as the hydrosphere. And then we consider the gaseous part. All this uh, earth is surrounded by a gas layer. This gas layer is known as the atmosphere. So in this lesson, we are going to learn more details about this atmosphere and the gases in the atmosphere too. Okay, children? So let's see what are the topics that we are going to learn under this lesson. Right. So we are going to learn this lesson under two main topics. What are they, children? Layers of the atmosphere. So I already explained you all that the earth is surrounded by an air layer. This is known as the atmosphere. So because of many reasons, this atmosphere, the main air layer divided into five other layers. We are going to learn about all these five layers in detail. Okay. So layers of atmosphere and then we are going to learn about air and its components. Right. So under this we are going to learn that air is a mixture of different gases and we are going to learn what are the different types of gases present in the atmosphere and also we are going to learn about air pollution too. Right children. So we'll start the lesson. Layers of atmosphere. So I told you all we are going to learn five different layers, right? And in detail we are going to learn what are the differences between each layers too, okay? Right, so layers of atmosphere. Let's go through this now. What can you see when you look at the sky? If it's the afternoon, you will see the clouds or the blue sky. If there are no clouds, we can clearly see the sky is blue, okay? If it's a night time, you will see stars, planets and sometimes the moon, right? Or sometimes you can even see uh, uh, air balloons or even sometimes aeroplanes as well, okay? And you see all these objects through the atmosphere, right? Through the air layers we can see. But can you see the atmosphere, children? We cannot see, right? But you cannot see the atmosphere. Okay, the gas layer we cannot see, the air layer we cannot see, but we can see all the other objects across this air layer. Now you already know the reason that you cannot see this air layer. What is the reason children? In the light lesson also, we learn that air is a transparent substance. Okay, air is transparent, right? Because air is transparent, even though we cannot see air, we can see all the other objects across air very clearly. Right children? So now we know that atmosphere is a transparent material. Right children? Okay. So what is this atmosphere? The atmosphere is a thin layer of gases that surrounds the earth. Okay. It spreads up nearly 700 kilometers from the earth's surface. So if it spreads up nearly 700 kilometers, is it a thin layer? Now here thin layer of gases means compared to the size of the earth, it is a thin layer. Otherwise 700 kilometers is not so thin, right? But when we compare the size or the depth of the earth, this is a thin layer. Okay children? So how can we consider this one then? Let's see. So if this is the earth, we can consider the atmosphere like this. Right. 
five children. Okay, so we can simply label this is the earth, this is the atmosphere. Atmosphere and this is the earth. Right children, so compared to the size of the earth or thickness of the earth, the thickness of the atmosphere is less. That is why we consider it's a thin layer. Right children? Okay. In grade 6, you have learned that gases have a mass. Now, in grade 6 second lesson, do you remember we learned a lesson called things around us? Under that we learned that things around us can be divided into two things, matter and non-matter energies. Under that we learned that matter has a mass and matter occupies space in the environment. Right children? So at the same time we learned that there are three states of matter. What are the three states of matter children? Those are solids, liquids and gases. Right? So in grade 6 you have learned that gases have a mass because gases are coming under matter. Every matter has a mass. Right? The weight of the gases above us puts pressure on us and all the things around us. Which means when we are living on this earth, above us there is an air column. Right? So we are carrying the weight of this air column all the time. Right children? So there is an air column above us and we are carrying the weight of that air column on us. Not only us, all the other objects too. So this weight or the pressure given by this air column on each object is known as the air pressure. What do you know about the air pressure children? Some of you must have learned that air pressure changes time to time from place to place. Right children? So when you go to higher elevations, let's say that if you are traveling from Colombo to Nuarelia, Nuarelia is in a hilly area. Right children? So then what happens? This Amount of the air that you are carrying in Nuarelia is less than that of in Colombo. How does that happen, children? Right. Let's say so when you consider now if this is the earth, then you consider the Colombo area. So we are almost at the sea level. So when you are going to Nuarelia, what happens, children? If this is where Colombo is present and when you are going to these hilly areas, let's say this is where Noorelia is present. Right children? And at the same time we will consider this is the atmosphere. Right? You can see the height of the air column here is higher than that of the height of the air column here. Right? So when the height of the air column increases, Air pressure caused by that air column also increases. Why does that happen, children? Height of the air column increases means more air particles present in this place than this place. Right, children? So here more air particles present. When more air particles present, more pressure is created by those air particles on that particular place. Right? When you consider this area, what happens, children? Less amount of air particles present compared to this place. So then what happens? The pressure created here by air is less than that of the first place, Colombo. Right children? So this is why according to the elevation, according to the place that you are going to or live in, the air pressure is, uh, air pressure changes. Okay children? Right. So this pressure is known as atmospheric pressure or simply air pressure, right? The atmospheric pressure is measured in millibars. When you are going to the upper grades, you are going to learn more about how to measure this air pressure, okay? So the atmospheric pressure is measured in millibars to forecast the weather, right children? So now we know that atmospheric pressure means the pressure acts on a surface by the air particles and from place to place, this air pressure changes. Okay, let's move on to the next. Right. So the height of a particular place from the sea level is known as altitude. Now I already explained this one. Right. Okay. 
the height of a particular place from the sea level is known as altitude. You must have learned this term in geography subject, okay? According to the altitude, the pressure and the temperature change in different levels of the atmosphere. So not only our pressure but temperature also changes. So later we are going to learn how this temperature changes from uh, throughout the atmosphere. Okay children? So according to the altitude, the pressure and the temperature change in different levels of the atmosphere. So according to the uh, altitude. Now here, when you go to a higher level, altitude is high. Right? Here altitude changes. Right children? So what happens? Here the altitude is different than that of Noorelia. So according to the altitude, what happens? When the altitude increases, air pressure decreases. Right? The height from the sea level is known as altitude. So when you consider Colombo and Noorelia, Noorelia's altitude is higher than that of Colombo because Colombo is almost at the sea level. Right children? When you consider Noorelia, because it's present in an upper elevation, here the altitude is higher than that of Colombo. I already explained y'all. When you consider Colombo and Noorelia, because when you are in a hilly area, we have to carry a less amount of air particles, air column, the height of the air column we have to carry is less. Therefore, air pressure is also less. So accordingly, we know now when the altitude increases, air pressure decreases. Right, children? Okay. So according to the altitude, the pressure and the temperature change in different levels of the atmosphere. Right? Not only pressure, Pressure and temperature both. Pressure and the temperature change in different levels of the atmosphere. We are going to learn very clearly how this temperature and pressure changes, okay? Right. Based on these differences, the atmosphere is divided into five layers. I already explained you all that. Based on different changes, this air layer surrounding the earth, which is known as the atmosphere, is again divided into five different layers. So what are these layers, children? The five layers of the atmosphere spread out from the earth's surface respectively. Right? So when you consider the earth, right? When you consider the earth, and if you consider the atmosphere like this right this is the earth and if this is the atmosphere right so the five layers of the atmosphere spread out from the earth's surface respectively so we are going to learn from the closest layer to the earth and towards the upper other layers, okay? From the closest layer. So number one should be the closest layer to the earth. Remember children, the closest layer to the earth is known as troposphere. 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 Right? The closest layer to the earth is known as the troposphere. This is where we all live, children. Okay, so we are going to learn about each layer after this, right? Troposphere is the layer where we all live and all the other functions, all the weather changes take place, right? Okay, what is the second layer away from the earth? The second layer is known as the stratosphere. Stratosphere. Right, children? So, stratosphere is the second layer from the earth, and then the third layer is known as mesosphere. That is the middle layer. Mesosphere. Fourth layer away from the earth is known as the thermosphere. Thermosphere. And the fifth or the last layer away from the earth is known as the exosphere, right? 
exhaust fear. Right, children? So the closest layer to the earth is known as the troposphere. Then the second layer is known as the stratosphere. Number three, the middle layer is known as the mesosphere. Number four, the fourth layer is known as the thermosphere. And the last layer, right, the outermost layer is known as the exosphere. Now you need to memorize all these terms in order, children. Right, you should know because according to these layers, they are according to the way they present from earth towards outside, their characteristics, their properties change. These pressure, temperature, everything changes because of the way they present away from the earth. Right, therefore, you need to memorize all these five layers in order. The closest layer to the earth where we live is known as troposphere. Second layer is known as stratosphere, third layer mesosphere, thermosphere is the fourth layer and the outermost layer is known as the exosphere. What is present after exosphere children? After exosphere space present. Right children? Right. We'll see a picture related to this one children. Look at this picture children. These are the five layers. This is the earth. This is known as the troposphere stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and the exosphere. Right children, you can see in the troposphere this uh, aeroplane and hot air balloon is here, right? Stratosphere is here in the mesosphere, you all can see here. This is a meteor, right? Thermosphere, you all can see. Now this one is known as the International Space Station, ISS, right? International Space Station is located in this thermosphere, right? So, exosphere, the outermost layer is known as the exosphere, right children? So, we are going to learn about each layer in detail now, right children? Right, now we are going to learn about the innermost layer of the atmosphere, which means the closest layer to the earth, okay? That is known as the troposphere. Right, children? Okay, so this is the lowest layer of the atmosphere, which is, which is closest to the earth, right? Near the equator, it spreads up to about 15 kilometers. Let's say near the equator, it spreads up to about 15 kilometers from the sea level. But near the poles, the height of the troposphere is about 8 kilometers only. Right, children? So let's consider a small picture related to this. I'll draw a small diagram here. So if this is the earth, and let's consider this is the equator area, where the temperatures high, higher than the polar regions. Now these are the polar regions, North Pole and South Pole. So if you consider the thickness of the closest layer or the troposphere, According to this, how does it change? Near the equator areas, its thickness is higher than that of the polar regions. So we can simply consider something like this. Right? So here, thickness is about 5 kilometers. About 5 kilometers. Near the equator, thickness is about 15 kilometers. Right, children? So what is the reason for this? What do you think is the reason, children? This happens because of the temperature changes, right? So in the polar region, you all know the temperature is very, very low. Because of that, the air particles contract, right? So in the lower grade, in grade 6 also, you learn that because of when the temperature is provided, when the heat is provided, when the temperature increases, uh, matter, they expand, right? When the heat is released from certain objects, what happens, children? The matter contract, the particles contract, right? So in the equator area, the temperature is higher. Therefore, this air gets heated up and air expands, right? Because of the expansion, it spreads up to about 15 kilometers. But when you consider the polar regions, because the temperature is very low, because of releasing heat, what happens, children? 
these air particles contract, which means they get closer to each other. That is why the thickness is less. Right, children? So this is the main reason for this difference of thicknesses. Okay? So near the equator, it spreads up to about 15 kilometers from the sea level. But near the poles, the height of the trop troposphere is about 8 kilometers. This should be 8. Right. So the next thing. Nearly 75% of the air in the atmosphere is in the troposphere. So which means when you consider the entire atmosphere, the most amount of air particles present in this closest layer. Right children? So nearly 75% of the air. 75% of the air in the atmosphere is in the troposphere. Right children? So most of the water vapor and dust particles are found in this layer too. Right children? So basically water vapor is released by many uh, places, right? So when you consider water bodies, during the daytime water bodies get heated up and water evaporates and it goes and forms clouds, right? So basically that uh, evaporated air uh, circulates in this troposphere and also you all know during the daytime when the plants get heated up uh, plants transpirate which means plants release water as water vapor this water vapor is also present in this troposphere right children this is why troposphere contains a lot of water vapor what about dust particles because this is the layer closest to the earth to the ground that is why more dust particles present in this layer. Right children? So most of the water vapor and dust particles are found in this layer. And at the same time, all the weather changes take place in the troposphere. Formation of clouds, formation of rain or precipitation, right? Formation of wind or cyclones, all these changes take place in this layer. And at the same time, this is where we live too, right? Helicopters, parachutes and aeroplanes travel through this layer too, right? All these activities take place in the troposphere, right children? So I hope you got a better understanding on this troposphere. We will go through this again. This is the lowest layer of the atmosphere, lowest layer or the closest layer to the earth or in another way, the innermost layer of the atmosphere. Right. So near the equator, at the same time, troposphere's thickness is different throughout the earth. It's not the same. Near the equator is higher than that of the polar regions. I told you the reason is because of expansion and contraction of these gas particles. Okay. Near the equator, it spreads up to about 15 kilometers from the sea level. But near the poles, the height of the troposphere is about 8 kilometers. Okay. Nearly 75% of the air in the atmosphere is in the troposphere. Most amount of air present in this troposphere, right? Most of the water vapor and dust particles are found in this layer too, right? I explain the reason for these two. All the weather changes take place in the troposphere and helicopters, parachutes and aeroplanes travel through this layer. Right, children? We'll move on to the next. Second layer away from the earth is known as the stratosphere, right? So this layer is 15 to 50 kilometers high above sea level, okay? 15 to 50 kilometers, which means that is also not evenly distributed, okay? The air is dry as there is very little water vapor in this layer. Whenever there is water vapor in air, air is moist, right? So we uh, here I explained you all that most of the water vapor present in troposphere. But when you consider stratosphere, very less amount of uh, water vapor present here. Therefore, air is dry. Okay. So the air is dry as there is very little water vapor. Air is dry. Thickness is 15 to 50 kilometers. Right. And there are no storms or turbulences. Why do you think is the reason? Storms or turbulences occur because of the movement of air particles, because of strong winds and all. Right? 
movement of air from one place to another place at different speeds, right? 75% of air present in the troposphere, which means the lowest layer, right? All the other layers contain, compared to the uh, troposphere, all the other air layers contain less amount of air particles. That is why without more air particles, there is no way for the occurrence of these storms or turbulences, okay, children? So there are no storms or turbulences in the stratosphere. Therefore, jets fly through this layer, which means no storms, no, no turbulences, means no disturbances through, right? So when there are no disturbances, jets can fly very easily through this layer, right, children? Therefore, jets fly through this layer because there is no disturbance uh, as in the troposphere, okay? Right. So the very speciality about this layer, now you all know what I am going to discuss about, the ozone layer. Do you know about the ozone layer, children? I am sure you know about the ozone layer. You have learned it in the lower grades too, okay? What is this ozone layer, children? Let's see. The ozone layer lies in the stratosphere. In one part of the stratosphere, a layer made up of ozone gas presence, right? This layer is known as the ozone layer. The special characteristic of this ozone layer is, in a way, it protects our Earth from harmful rays coming from the sun. So when we consider solar radiation, what we can see is known as, what we can see during the daytime is known as the visible light, okay? But the solar radiations made up of many other rays too. What are those other rays? Ex apart from the visible light, it has a certain type of rays called UV rays. UV rays means ultraviolet rays, right? And another type of rays called IR rays or infrared rays, gamma rays, X-rays, radio waves, different types of waves or rays present in the solar radiation. What we can see? Only a certain range that is known as visible light. All the other rays we cannot see. Right, children? So out of these different waves or rays, UV rays or ultraviolet rays are kind of harmful to us. Right? So if this ultraviolet rays reaches the earth, what will happen, children? If we get exposed to ultraviolet rays for a long period of time, we will get diseases like cancers, cataract in the eyes, right? And the plants will get dried up. There are so many harmful effects of this uh, long-term exposure to UV rays, so ultraviolet rays. But the better part is this ozone layer can absorb these harmful UV rays coming from the sun, which means the UV rays will not reach the earth. It is absorbed by the ozone layer, right? The harmful part of the uh, sunlight will not reach the earth, only the important part will be there, right? But at the same time, when you learn about these uh, environmental pollution, you know that sometimes because of emission of certain harmful gases, this ozone layer gets damaged. This is known as, known as ozone layer depletion. Right, children? When the ozone layer gets damaged from that damaged area because there has no ozone gas to absorb these harmful UV rays, these harmful UV rays could enter the earth. This is a very bad thing. Right, children? So we have to be very particular about protecting this ozone layer too. Some of some artificial gases like chlorofluorocarbon uh, released to the environment can damage this ozone layer. Right, children? Okay, so the ozone layer lies in the stratosphere. This is very important. This is a special layer which prevents the ultraviolet or UV rays of the sun from falling on the earth prevents the ultraviolet rays, okay? So because of this ozone layer is very important to us, okay? So now you know several factors about stratosphere, its thickness, right? Very, very little amount of water vapor present, no storms or turbulences, ozone layers present. What is the other one, children? Let's go through this. The cumulonimbus closer to the stratosphere, takes the shape of an anvil. 
cumulo nimbus is a type of a cloud children most of the time this cumulo nimbus cloud uh, forms just before it rains therefore these are sometimes known as rain clouds its shape or shape is as of an anvil anvil shape because of its shape these are known as anvil clouds too right children the cumulonimbus closer to the stratosphere takes the shape of an anvil, right? The reason for this shape is the blowing wind in one direction. So here something like this could happen. So when you consider uh, the atmosphere, the closest layer to the earth is known as the troposphere. And now we know that all the weather changes take place in the troposphere, right? Including formation of the clouds, okay? So if you consider, this is the earth, this is the troposphere, the next layer is the stratosphere, this is where the ozone layer present, this is where the clouds form, troposphere. So the area where this troposphere and stratosphere gets divided is known as the tropo tropopause, right? We can simply consider there is no exact margin. But because of the changes of these uh, temperature and pressure, air pressure, there is likely a marginal area. This is known as tropopause. Right, children? So then when we consider these type of clouds, sometimes these clouds, upper part of the cloud gets this anvil shape when the wind blows to one direction. Let's say that if wind blows to this direction, the upper part of the cloud is brushed away with wind and it takes the shape of the anvil. Right? It takes the shape of this anvil like this. And then what happens when this upper part reaches this upper area? It cannot move across this drop of force. Right? Because of these um, air pressure changes, it will not go beyond this line it will stop from here that's why the top part of this anvil shaped cloud or cumulonimbus cloud gets a flat surface okay children here look at this one you all can see the upper part is flat here right so this is this could be considered as the area where the troposphere and stratosphere get separated or the tropopause area Right? So if you see this type of cloud, you could expect rains afterwards. Right, children? Right. Okay. The cumulonimbus closer to the stratosphere takes the shape of an anvil. The reason for this shape is the blowing wind in one direction. Okay. Rain with thundering and lightning can be expected after forming these types of clouds these are because of that sometimes these are known as rain clouds too okay so uh, or maybe uh, anvil clouds too okay but the correct name is cumulo nimbus cloud okay so this is the shape anvil shape is the shape of the cumulo nimbus cloud right children so cumulo nimbus cloud shaped as an anvil right children so after going through all these things, now you know many details about stratosphere. Remember, there are many more other details about stratosphere. You can read books and you can refer to the internet and you can learn them too. Okay, right. So the layers, the thickness is layer 15 to 50 kilometers high above sea level. The ice dry and no storms or turbulences. Jets fly through this layer because there is no disturbance. The ozone layer present here, the importance of ozone layer is it can absorb the harmful UV rays coming from the sun, right? And uh, cumulonimbus cloud closer to the stratosphere takes a shape. It is not in the stratosphere, it is closer to the stratosphere, just below that, right? It takes the shape of an anvil, right children? So I hope you got a better understanding about the stratosphere now. Right. So we have this activity to do. You all can do this activity very easily. Right, children? So you have to do this all by yourself in order to understand this better. Okay? Go out on a day with a clear sky. Right? 
identify a cumulonimbus cloud. You have to keep on looking at this. There are some clouds that keep on changing its face, uh, its shape, okay? Continue looking at that cloud. You will see that the height of the cloud increases, right? Height of the cloud increases and the top of the cloud gets flat when the height increases, which means it's moving away from the earth, which means it's moving upwards towards the troposphere and it goes to the area where stratosphere and troposphere divides with each other, right? The top of the cloud gets flat. Then check whether the cloud has got the shape of an anvil. Only by looking at the sky, these type of clouds for quite some time, you can understand, you can look how it forms and how the shape changes. Okay, children, so you have to go out on a, during a daytime and you can do this activity very easily. Right, let's move on to the next. Right, so the third layer away from the earth is known as the mesosphere. So out of the five layers, this is in between the other four layers. This is the middle one, right? So mesosphere extends from 50 to 80 kilometers up from the sea level. Okay. This is the coldest layer among the five layers, right? This can be very cold as sometimes the coldest temperature could be reported uh, uh, up to minus 90 degrees Celsius, right? The coldest layer among the five layers of the atmosphere, okay? In this layer, water vapor gets frozen because it's very, very cold. The little amount of water vapor present gets frozen and it forms ice clouds, right? Water vapor gets frozen into ice clouds, right? So then this is very interesting. When the sun sets, the rays fall on these ice clouds and you can see these clouds during the night time. If you have seen clouds like this with different colors during the night time, these are the ice clouds actually. Uh, sunlight, sun's rays fall on these ice clouds, it makes patterns like this. Okay, clouds in mesosphere. Okay, children, right? So, mesosphere is the third layer or the middle layer. So, it extends from 50 to 80 kilometers up from the sea level. It is the coldest layer and they are, because it's very cold, what happens? The water vapor frozen into ice clouds, right? When the sun sets, the rays fall on these clouds and you can see these clouds during the night time. Right, children? Okay, so we'll move on to the next one. Fourth layer, thermosphere. So when you consider the thermosphere, thermosphere's temperatures is, temperature is very high, okay? Thermosphere lies from 80 to 120 kilometers up from the sea level. Tem temperature is very high here. The air particles in this layer absorb the sun's rays. So the temperature in this layer is very high. Temperature in this layer is very high. So when you consider the second layer stratosphere, there are also temperatures high. What is the reason? Because of the presence of the ozone layer, it absorbs part of the sunlight, UV rays. Therefore, their temperature is also high. But when you consider the thermosphere, thermosphere's temperature is, temperature is even higher, right? So, International Space Station is situated in this layer. What is, what is International Space Station, children, right? This is the largest space station, okay? International Space Station is the largest, it is the largest space station. And this is an orbiting science lab, okay, orbiting laboratory, okay. So this is a function, this project is functioned by five different nations. What are they children? USA, Canada, Japan, Russia and Europe, okay. So those five nations together uh, maintain this International Space Station. Okay, so what happens there, children? In this International Space Station, scientists live there. They do different researches on different topics. Okay, not only about space. They find different other things. They do researches on the 
water and the purity of water present on the earth okay likewise they do other uh, life science activities and all right so not only about space they do other researches too so this is actually a kind of a space craft okay children right so international space station is situated in this layer this is short form is iss right both the special scenery is called now look at this picture right both the special scenery is called aurora borealis and aurora australis occur in the thermosphere right so aurora borealis occurs in the north pole area north region therefore these are known as northern lights too right look at this picture in the north part of the earth you can see this incident these are beautiful lights incident called uh, northern lights and southern lights okay so aurora borealis which is known as northern lights this is the picture of that right aurora australis they are known as southern lights that present in the south pole polar areas right so what is the reason for these children when the sun's rays uh, falls on these areas and specifically these areas have a magnetic field the polar regions have a certain magnetic field right because of this magnetic field and when these uh, sunlight falls on these areas they form because of many other reasons too they form these type of beautiful lights these are known as northern and southern lights okay so aurora borealis is known as the northern lights aurora australis is known as the southern lights okay so both special scenery is called aurora borealis and aurora australis occur in the thermosphere right and aurora borealis can be seen near the northern pole and aurora australis can be seen near the southern pole right children now we are going to watch a video on these uh, northern and southern lights Right, children. I hope you enjoyed that beautiful video on this northern and southern lights. Right, children. So these are known as polar lights too. Right. So what are the important uh, points about this thermosphere? It lies from eighty to one hundred twenty kilometers up from the sea level. Right. The air particles in this layer absorb the sun's rays. Therefore, temperatures very high. Okay, at the same time, ISA, so International Space Station is also located, situated in this layer. And you can see the northern lights and southern lights in certain times of the year. We can see this incident that also occurs in this layer, okay, in the stratos in the thermosphere. Right, children? Okay, we'll move on to the next exosphere the outermost layer of the atmosphere the closest to the space right the thinnest layer in the atmosphere this is the thinnest layer in the atmosphere this layer is 120 kilometers high above sea level and there is no certain border between the exosphere and space we can't exactly say that this is the margin of the atmosphere. This is the end of the atmosphere. It just thins out towards the space, right? Anyway, when you go from troposphere to exosphere, the amount of air particles reduces. Therefore, when you go to exosphere, very little amount of air particles present and it just spreads out towards the space and there is no exact margin, okay? Right. So now we know there are five layers of the atmosphere starting from the earth closest to the earth number one troposphere number two stratosphere number three mesosphere and the fourth layer is thermosphere and the last layer is known as the exosphere right children 
So to understand this better, we are going to do this very simple activity that you all can do very easily. Let's see. So the activity is building up a model of the layers in the atmosphere. So when we make a model, now I'm going to show you one way of making a model, but you can be creative and you can come up with your own ideas too, okay? So let's see, to do this activity. Now this one, all of you can do it very easily even at home, okay? So try to do this one, try to understand this better, right? So what you need is some A4 sheets. You can use the same color or even different colors also you can use as you like it, okay? And a pair of scissors, a drawing pin, and a picture of the earth we need, okay? To paste in the middle of this structure, okay? We'll write A4 sheets, a pair of scissors, a drawing pin to fix all the cutouts. Drawing pin, a picture of picture of earth. Right, a four sheets, pair of scissors, a drawing pin, and a picture of the earth. Okay, right. How to do this activity? So simply, you have to. Uh, using A4 sheets, you have to cut each layer and you have to paste this uh, picture of the earth in the middle and you have to fix everything with a drawing pin and that's it. Easy. You can label them. Right? Cut a big circle from an A4 sheet in maximum size. So when we do this, when you look at this picture, you all know that the biggest circle belongs to the outermost layer, exhaust sphere. Right? Cut another circle with a radius of 2 centimeters less than the big circle. Right? Look at this. So, this is the picture of the earth. So, this is the, this is one cut out. The other one. And the last one like this. So if you want, you can use different colors too. It will be better that way because uh, we can see the layers very easily then, right? So cut another circle. Number one, cut a big circle from an A4 sheet in maximum size. That is this, the biggest one, right? Cut another circle with a radius of 2 centimeters less than the big circle, which means this second circle, this one, right? Its radius uh, should be less than about 2 centimeters than the bigger circle's radius, okay? Cut three more circles and each circle should have a radius of 2 centimeters less than the other circles, right? So each one. Paste the picture of the earth on the smallest circle which means this, right? And write the word troposphere on it. You all can see here. So, we will write. You see clearly, this is the troposphere. So, troposphere. And keep the circles on the big circle and fix them together using the drawing pin as shown in the figure. Write the names of the layers on the circles, right? So the first, the closest layer to the earth is troposphere, even here also it's mentioned. Then stratosphere. Mesosphere. Thermosphere 
and finally exhaust fear. When you consider uh, these layers, this is not exactly proportionate, right? Remember now when we learn the thicknesses of each layer, thicknesses are different according to this one. Uh, the difference between the difference of the thickness of each layer is the same. Here the thicknesses are the same, but it's just a structure to understand this better, right? If you do this as a group activity, we can make a bigger model. And if we have space in each circle, we can even write the other very important information too. And you can display it to the class, right children? So you can, as I told you all before, you can be creative here, okay? So this type of the small one, small structure that you make, you can even paste on your writing book and you can, it's very easy to study using that, okay? Right, so keep the circles on the big circle and fix them together using the drawing pin. But if you are going to paste it in the writing book, you should not use the drawing pin, okay? So write the names of these layers on the circles and show your model to the teacher, okay? So I'll show you how to do this activity very easily now. Right children, now we are going to make a model of the layers in the atmosphere. Now you all know that when we consider the atmosphere, there are five layers. What are the layers children? Troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and the exosphere. Right? So using this model, we are going to show what are the different layers. Okay? Right. Here I already explained you all how to do this activity. You all can see I have five cutouts of these circles of different sizes okay and here i have a small picture of the earth now you all know that the atmosphere present surrounding the earth so you know the earth should go in the middle therefore i am going to take the smallest circle and i am going to fix this earth the picture of the earth in the middle you can even paste it okay right here i am going to use a drawing pin so we are going to consider this as the first layer of the atmosphere, right? What is the name of this first layer, children? You all know the closest layer to the earth is the troposphere. Let's write that. Right, let's write troposphere. Troposphere. Right, children? Okay. We need to fix these two. You can even paste them from the middle, children. Okay? Right. Now, after this one, I am going to take the second smallest circle. Right? And then we need to fix it like this. Right, you all can see. So we are going to consider this layer as the second layer. What is the second layer from Earth, children? Second layer in the atmosphere from Earth that is known as the stratosphere. We are the ozone layers present, okay? We'll write that one as well. Stratos. Okay, children, troposphere and stratosphere. Right. Okay, we are going to take the next circle here we have and fixing it like this. What is the name of the third layer of the atmosphere, children? It is known as the mesosphere. Mesosphere, troposphere, stratosphere and mesosphere and then I am fixing it with the next one, next circle and starting from the earth, troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere and what is the fourth layer? Thermosphere. Thermosphere. 
the atmosphere. Right, children. And now our last layer. What is the outermost layer of the atmosphere, children? That is known as the exosphere. Outermost layer of the atmosphere. Right, children? We will write that to exosphere. Right, children? So, our model is ready. Okay? Can you all see this clearly? This is the model. I will fix this to this rigid form so that we can observe clearly. Right, children? So, yeah, when you make, when you make this uh, model, remember, you can make different changes. You can to observe this easily. You can use different colored uh, circles here, right? Or you can color them separately, okay? Or you can paste them if you don't like to use this type of drawing pin. You can even uh, paste it from the middle, okay? Right, children? Look at this one. Now, this is the earth. Starting from the earth, surrounding the earth, the atmosphere is present. So, when you consider the atmosphere, we can identify there are five layers. Okay, there are five layers of the atmosphere. What is the closest layer to the earth? That is known as the troposphere, right? And then second closest layer is known as the stratosphere. We learn what are the uh, characteristics of these uh, features of this uh, each layer, right? And then the third layer is mesosphere, right? And then thermosphere. And finally, the outermost layer is known as the exosphere. Innermost layer is the troposphere. Outermost layer is the exosphere. So, using this model, we can understand the arrangement of each layer of the atmosphere very easily. Right, children. So, you also how easy to make that model. So, I hope you will do this activity at home and you can study about the layers very easily using this type of model, okay? Right, children. So, we have completed the first chapter of this lesson. So, do you remember what we learned here? We learn about the atmosphere. Now, we know that atmosphere is the thin air layer surrounding the earth. And not only that, based on the pressure and temperature changes, we can divide the atmosphere into five different layers. Right now, we learn what are the uh, different characteristics of these layers too. So, do you remember what are the layers in order starting from the Earth? That is the troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, and finally the outermost layer is known as the exosphere. So, I hope you got a better understanding about the different layers of the atmosphere and their special characteristics. So, we are going to learn the other details about the atmosphere in the next chapters. To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education.